Tell me about a time when you faced technical and people challenges at the same time. Hey everyone, welcome back to another engineering manager mock interview. Today we have Christina and we're going to be doing a, a behavioral or tell me about a time type question. So before we get into that, Christina, do you mind just telling the audience a little bit about who you are and what your background is? Sure. Hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Christina. I'm currently working for Google as engineering program manager and I'm with uh, Google Maps team. Uh, prior to Google, I was uh, with Discovery Media Company as a technical program manager. Great. Thanks. So today I'd like to ask you this. Tell me about a time when you faced technical and people challenges at the same time. Sure. Just taking a note. time when I had technical and people challenge. Uh, okay, uh, would you mind giving me like 10 seconds so I collect my thoughts and structure the answer a little better? Yeah. All right, so um, I'll be telling you about a feature uh, that I was leading an effort to deliver while I was with uh, Discovery. And I'm thinking I'm going to structure my answer in a way that uh, I'll give you an intro to the to the project team structure and uh, kind of inputs uh, we had for the project. Then I'll walk you through the events that led us pretty much to technical and people challenges, and then uh, explain how I dealt with that and handled that as a TPM for the project. Does that sound good for you? Yeah, the structure sounds good. All right. Uh, so uh, about the project, so we were building a feature called uh, meal planning. Uh, the goal was to allow our end customer to uh, preset uh, the recipes that they want to cook for a specific uh, time of a day or a specific day of week or months. So they kind of have the plan laid out in advance rather than plan something in rush. So uh, business goal was to deliver this project by September because at that time uh, everyone thought that people would be back to schools and offices by September and the goal was to deliver this by that time. Uh, this was a pretty large effort. We estimated it to three and a half months of uh, development and including QA tested, including releases, and we had five teams involved. There was were iOS team, Android team, two different backend teams, plus uh, editorial team who was uh, creating a content and uh, presets of data for uh, this feature. So we started this project end of May and our estimations were perfectly uh, laid out till uh, end of summer. Uh, we thought we'll deliver that think like last week of August by the time. But then uh, what happened uh, that our company signed a contract with, uh, with a new platform where uh, in contract we promised to deliver feature parity from iOS and Android to two additional platforms, Vab and Roku. Uh, the nuance that this uh, contract created for us is the backend technology for the API layer. Originally, we thought about REST APIs as a kind of wrapper around our uh, services APIs and uh, our iOS and Android team were uh, aware how to work with REST that was commonly used technology. So there was no additional uh, technical complexity with integration with REST APIs. But this new Roku platform uh, created a need to uh, write API layer, not with REST technology, but with a GraphQL. So GraphQL allows uh, slower devices, uh, minimize the response size, uh, content size that you are receiving from the backend with requesting just specific fields that you need. In REST, you would just get a body of response and it contains all the data, no matter what you need. In GraphQL, you're requesting specific resources. So um, we understood that our options either continue doing what we are doing with REST, but uh, spend another three to four weeks of limited backend team time later in the year to 
create a parity in this API layer just in GraphQL, or we need to change uh, the backend technology now at the beginning of the project to avoid like duplication of uh, uh, of same services. But uh, client teams were not aware how to work with GraphQL. That was a totally new technology for them. Uh, so that's pretty much what happened. That's a technical challenge, what to do here. People challenge was that obviously changing the technology was uh, meaning change in the timeline and business stakeholders were absolutely not happy about that. So what we do there? Uh, obviously we needed to come up with some trade-offs and agree with engineering and product teams what to do next. So as a TPM, I get together with uh, engineering leads and we walk through options, what we can do, uh, get estimations for them and outline them to products. So pretty much we had three options. Option one, the worst, um, not change anything, we would still deliver this meal planning project in the originally planned timeline, but uh, this four weeks of rework later in the year would affect our yearly roadmap of the product. So kind of uh, sacrificing yearly roadmap for just one feature. Uh, option two, uh, we are changing the technology, but our estimate for integration with new backend technology was around additional four weeks. Uh, for client teams to uh, take some um, spikes. We call them spikes. It's like a ticket to do some research, analysis, uh, something without like story point business deliverables. So we estimated that to two weeks of spikes for Android and iOS team to understand how to work with technologies, how to restructure client code uh, to work with those plus additional two weeks for unforeseen complexity of integration since we didn't really know what to expect. Uh, option three, uh, cut scope. Cut scope, simplify designs for this feature, and potentially those cuts might allow us to save some time. So we outlined those three options to our business stakeholders. Uh, engineers were up for option two or three, anything except for option one. Uh, first response from business was that they don't wanna do cuts, they don't wanna change the timeline, they don't really care what technology we would use. We need to deliver this feature by that time. So we had a few rounds of internal conversation uh, about the impact and uh, what any options would mean for us and like argument that we would deliver meal planning by end of August, but we would have to cut months or even more of features for the roadmap uh, that played out uh, with our stakeholders. And we started rounds of design revisions and scope cuts. Were you able to have any input on the decision making here or was it just 100% up to whatever the business stakeholders wanted to go with? Well, so I obviously shared my vision, like what we need to do and like why it's better to do maybe short term sacrifice for long term goals. Uh, but the decision was mostly on the business side of things. Got it. Sure. So um, once we, like when we started this conversation as if not enough stuff was going on off, uh, one of the iOS engineers gave a notice, two, week, uh, two weeks notice that she's leaving. So obviously without scope cut, even without change of technology, we won't be able to deliver uh, iOS part of thing on time because we didn't have any other resources to borrow or to replace that person with. So all those factors uh, kind of forced business side of things to make a decision into, into the side of uh, design scope cuts. So after we proposed some scope cuts, we did re-estimations and how much time we can save for that. And our initial like four weeks of time increase ended up being two weeks of size increase, of time increase. So that's what we've agreed upon. New timeline was mid-September, but kind of we were doing our best to deliver that faster. But realistic was mid-September. So I think at this point, this was already sometime in mid-June. So about like two weeks, a little less than two weeks took us all this uh, back and forth with uh, different teams. But after that, I can say that uh, project went out smooth and uh, we delivered it like 
few days uh, over the, those additional two weeks. So we were almost perfectly accurate with our re-estimations. Cool. So I think that's about it. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I'm wondering if, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. but if you were to do this again, um, was there, would there be anything that you would do differently? Um, yeah, actually, one thing that, like, retrospectively still brings me into that uh, situation was one particular component of this feature. We were building a custom calendar, and uh, at that time, product team felt very strong that we need to build a custom calendar component rather than use something out of the box that iOS or Android can provide. So an only effort on that feature was about three weeks, I think, three to four weeks, just the UI for that custom calendar. So product team was pushing that it's uh, coming up to the research that users are giving feedback that that calendar is very important and they really want to use that fancy pretty designed calendar but i think for still think that for kind of mvp version of that feature we should have gone with just custom calendars to roll this out faster to spend less time on initial version to save time on all those communications back and forth and just releasing something working in mvp and then improve this calendar over time if analytics show that there is a huge usage by end users of that specific calendar. And uh, once we released the feature, analytics showed that less than, I think it was around 0.3% of users were even coming to that flow where that calendar would pop up. So it was real kind of waste of three weeks, like maybe two weeks of waste. So it was very, very expensive feature without much of a outcome at the end. So I think at that era, I'm still not sure what should have been my arguments there, but I think we should have discussed more that particular part. Yeah, thanks for surfacing that. So I, I don't have any other follow-up questions. Thanks for sharing your, your answer for this mock interview. Um, all in all, I think this was a great interview. I really liked your communication and how you laid out everything very clearly with the structure in the beginning. And I thought that you did a great job diving deep into the details and I, I had some follow-ups there that I uh, really liked your answers to. So thanks for your time on, on our show today. And I'm wondering for you also, if you have any thoughts that you wanted to share with the audience on how to answer these types of questions or anything that you might do differently to improve your answer if you were to answer this again. Yeah, sure. So what I would mention that even I know that this is like mock interview, I'm still getting getting nervous and I still feel that it's interview and pressure. So when you're relaxed and just getting ready for those types of questions, your answers sound more structured and more clear to you than when you're trying to answer. So that's probably normal. You just have to be ready for this additional level of stress. What I would suggest to other people is to really do a great homework on different like behavior, tell us about the time, uh, retrospective into your past background, like preparation of cases. So that helped me a lot. I did spend a lot of many hours getting ready to different types of questions that you can find easily on Exponent or through the internet somewhere else. Um, it, it would really kind of pay off if you spend the time at home uh, getting more ready for those those questions. Yeah, behavioral questions definitely require a lot of thinking and doing a lot of homework on your own just so that um, you know what to say when whenever you, you get in any of these questions. But all in all, um, thanks for your time, Christina, and for the audience at home, good luck with your upcoming engineering manager interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.